welcome to EDC's Week in Review, your March 22nd edition. This week's weather looks like a little bit of rain, a little bit of clouds, and a little bit of sun, so a mixed bag for this week. Now on to the top stories. State sues county and city over needle exchange bans. The California Department of Health has sued the county and Placerville, seeking to force the removal of bans on drug paraphernalia distribution programs operated by the Sierra Harm Reduction Coalition. The state claims the local bans oversteps its authority, while local officials argue they have the right to protect their citizens. DA Vern Pearson expressed outrage at the state's lawsuit and vowed to fight it, arguing such programs have increased drug deaths and harm in the county and have led to needles in public places frequented by children. County Board Chair Wendy Thomas stated she is disgusted and appalled by the state's lawsuit and plans to discuss response and support measures at the next board meeting. Possible Measles Exposure at UCDER The County Public Health Department warned that around 300 people, including some county residents, may have been exposed to measles by a child seen at the UCD Emergency Department on March 5th. Those present between 12 to 5 p.m. were instructed to contact public health for guidance as measles poses serious risks, especially for vulnerable groups. Parolee arrested after fleeing Placerville Police Placerville Police arrested James Ganaccio, a parolee at large, after he fled on foot when approached on Broadway Drive. Following a short pursuit, Ganaccio was apprehended and found with a suspected methamphetamine pipe, leading to charges of parole violation, resisting arrest, and drug paraphernalia possession. Fleeing driver apprehended. A reckless driver was pursued by a county sheriff's deputy on Highway 50 near Elks Club Drive on March 21st. The suspect, Jason Freed, 50 of South Lake Tahoe, attempted to evade arrest by hiding his vehicle and fleeing on foot. With assistance from local law enforcement agencies and tracking footprints of the snow, Freed was located hiding in boulders and arrested. He faces multiple charges, including DUI, evading arrest, and driving without a license and is being held on $10,000 bail. Deputies conduct retail theft operation. Sheriff's deputies, aided by Folsom Police and Target Security, conducted an operation at the El Dorado Hills Target store to combat organized retail crime. Six people were contacted, with four cited for petty theft, fraud, and trespassing. A missing runaway juvenile was also located and reunited with family. Temporary bans on new smoke shops enacted. Responding to a rise in tobacco shops and teen tobacco use, Placerville City Council and the County Board of Supervisors approved temporary moratoriums on accepting new smoke shop applications. The 45-day city ban and 10-month county ban allow time to draft permanent regulations limiting such businesses. Grand Jury finds Georgetown Airport hazardous for pilots. The 2023-24 Grand Jury Report identified significant overgrowth of trees around the Georgetown Airport, posing risks to pilots and violating FAA regulations. Despite being aware since 2013, the county failed to promptly address the hazardous conditions, leading to Caltrans closing the airport for night operations in December 2023. Clearing the required trees is estimated to cost $50,000 to $100,000, which the airport cannot afford due to operating at a loss. EDHCSD keeps low and report private and updates lawsuit. The El Dorado Hills CSD reported that investigation into former GM Kevin Lowen's conduct is complete, but details remain confidential due to attorney-client privilege. The district also decided to seek new legal representation in its lawsuit against the county auditor over assessment fees. Cannabis permit appealed denied despite residents' concerns. Despite concerns from Somerset residents about odor, water usage, and proximity to a bus stop, the County Board of Supervisors denied an appeal against a commercial cannabis cultivation permit for farmer David Hard. The board ruled that Hard's mitigation efforts and assurances about water usage were sufficient, allowing him to proceed with the seven-acre grow. An appeal can be made again in 90 days. Mosquito Road Closure Extended Due to weather delays, the county has extended the full closure of Mosquito Road at the gates from March 29th to 30th to allow for concrete delivery and placement for the Mosquito Bridge project. A detour via Rock Creek Road will be in place, with flaggers assisting traffic during the closure period. The bridge project has also reached its halfway point and is set to be completed December 2025. And now for some news nuggets. The Sheriff's Office has introduced a new online map that shows evacuation warnings, orders, routes, and resources during emergencies like fires and floods. The County Board of Education is looking for a new trustee to fill the vacancy left by the resignation of Richard Fisher from Area 5. 
American River Conservancy celebrated the opening of its new Bob Massad Education Center at Wakamatsu Farm. Joshua Garner was convicted of 10 felonies, including burglary, robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, criminal threats with a firearm, and injury enhancements, which stemmed from a 2021 robbery involving threats over a drug debt. Sergio Morales was found guilty of misdemeanor DUI, his third such conviction within 10 years, and was sentenced to 634 days in county jail. Resurfacing and rehab work of Ice House Road will cause 30 to 60 minute delays from May to November. And our last story is to close the program. Local soccer star signs pro contract at 17. Colorado Hills soccer club standout Tag Chalmers has achieved his dream of becoming a professional soccer player at just 17 years old. Chalmers signed with USL League One team Fuego FC, where he will be coached by former U.S. national team player Jermaine Jones. Chalmers' dedication, work ethic, and family support propelled him to this rare opportunity. He made his pro debut on February 10th and looks forward to learning from coaching legend. He made his pro debut on February 10th and looks forward to learning from coaching legend Jones. New Discovery series seeks gold in Placerville's backyard. A new Discovery Channel series, America's Backyard Gold, follows veteran miner Dave Turin as he prospects for gold, beginning with Placerville in the first episode. Turin and local gold hunter Albert Fossil went sniping in a local stream, pulling out $840 worth of gold from a spot previously thought to be emptied. The series highlights both modern techniques and historical context. This has been EDC's Week in Review, your March 22nd edition. Thank you for tuning in. And if you enjoy our content, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. And if you want to learn more about these stories, please see the show notes.